Welcome back to this Final Fantasy XIV Let's Play. You're Sambo, and joining us, as always, here in Eorzea is Seraphis Thrawn, who at the moment is actually our little level 7 Chondra G'day! Standing in front of the fountain here outside the inn, and hopefully those of you with a keen eye will have seen our little inn tribute at the end of last week's episode. It's a very, very cool mechanic, that one, by the way. And once again, reminding you guys that your inn is over here. If we have a look on the map and see where I am in Uldar, at least it's right here in the center of town. You can see a little bed icon there right where I'm wriggling my mouse. That is where you want to log out because of course not only will you get the cool go to bed animations and waking up ones when you wake up the next time you log in, but you'll get yourself some rested XP, which is exactly what we're after. And as always, of course, Final Fantasy is bustling with players. We love coming here. The game has absolutely exploded, which is odd given that it used to be free to play and now that it's a subscription based game you'd think there'd be less people but seriously Masamune which is where we are now that's the name of our server it is locked it is still locked you still cannot actually join this server because it's full which is both awesome and annoying of course we'd love to see you guys here but you can't come and join us just yet because there's no room on the server hopefully that will change very very soon of course we're all looking forward to patch 2.0 as well and that's not going to be too far off we hope before we go any further though got a couple of shout outs as we stand here looking at the gorgeous view I love that water effect by the way three shout outs today one from Jerobo124 and they say hey Sambo NZ I was wondering if I could get a shout out in your next Final Fantasy video especially if you're doing a session with the lovely beautiful Catella Everly there you go Catella did you hear that that's a bit of a compliment for you there and the rest of the marvelous people that you play with your videos have made me want to get back into the MMO playing style again keep up the great work and that is from Jeroba and look at this who is interrupting us over here that would be Maple Butterworth who of course is one of our Distant World League members looking fantastic look at that it's always nice to see fellow Link Shell members and of course you know what you're always bumping into them here on the server it's great so boy I wish you guys could come and join us hopefully the server will unlock soon fingers crossed got another shout out here from Stardrake123 and they say hey Sambo can I please get a shout out since today was my final day being senior at my high school I would love for me to get a shout out since today is probably the most happiest day of my life and it would mean a lot to me thank you for the awesome videos well Star Trek 123 congratulations that is awesome in fact I think we're gonna give you the clap let's see if you can get the clap there we go, Seraphis agrees with me. Indeed, indeed. Final day of being senior at high school. That's a day that you're going to remember forever and ever. Congratulations, mate, and all the very best with whatever happens next. Boy, it's a big, big old world out there. All right, one more shout out. And this is from, wow, now this is a username and a half. It is Walid1234567890100. I'm going to read that one out again. It is Walid1234567890100. And they say, hey Sambo, thanks a lot for your Let's Play of Final Fantasy XIV. I'll be getting this game because of your series. Good to hear it, mate. That's what we like to hear. Any chance I could get a shout out in the next episode? There is every single chance. So for you, Walid, 1234567890100, that is your shout out. And thank you very much for your support. We do appreciate it. Reminding you guys, if you'd like a shout out, all you need to do is ask. It is that simple. You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to like. You don't have to do anything at all. Just ask me in the comments below this video. Now, what are we doing here today? Why aren't we with the Link Shell today? Well, that's because we're going to be doing a bit of a solo kind of episode because some of you guys might remember that we're on that quest at the moment. We're on that one where we have to seek out our companions and choose our companion. And we've got a flashing Link Pearl down here. So if I click on this, we can see here the Path of the Twelve. That's what we're doing. Greeting Seraphis, I bear good tidings. Lady Minfilia has given her blessing to your choice of path companion. Hurry to the Waking Sands and I shall introduce you to one another. Now if you're wondering what's going on here folks, you need to step back a couple of episodes where we did our last single player story. And that's when we had to go into the Waking Sands, which of course is in the Market Ward area. And we had to go and choose our companion. Now a couple of things have come up since then. Obviously it's been approved. Hence this message here. So that's good. Can't wait to get there and sort that out. But 
But I have realized that I can actually choose a different companion if I wish. And to be honest, that is something that I would like to do. So I think first things first, I have no idea how this is going to work. But we're going to head on over to the market wards. And you guys know where that is. In fact, it's, let me wriggle my mouse, it's up there, up near the Etherite Plaza. So we have to go through the markets here and look at how grand Uldar is looking when it's not pitching like that again that is perfectly normal that happens when lots and lots of characters are loading in so that's not my computer it just means that there's a whole bunch of character models being loaded and you get those sort of hitchy load pauses you kind of get used to it after a while a lot of people do this a lot of people actually walk around the area the first time they come here because that gives the game just a bit more of a chance to actually load in so you can see it's still struggling away there go on go on and very shortly you're going to see a whole bunch of people appear around here I don't make a liar I mean there we go they were the ones that we went past and here we go you can see them all coming in now so you can see why it hitches because there is a whole bunch of people here that you don't realize at first and it's rendering them all in very slowly so at first you think, hang on, there's nobody around. Why is it doing that? Why is it all lumpy? That is why. Now for now though, I'm just going to run there because we're pretty much just going to go straight into the market ward. It means we're going to be a bit jumpy on our way over here. But that's okay. It doesn't spoil the fun any. It just means it's a little bit laggy. So if you are playing Final Fantasy XIV and you think, oh gosh, my computer's not up to it, it's not that at all. It's just the way the game loads them all in. All right, so here we go. We've got the Market Wards. We've got the Lamintan Mercantile House. We've got the Gridanian Mercantile House. We've got the Uldan Mercantile House. We've got the Hall of Flames. And what we want is the Merchant's Ward. That's the one we want for this particular quest. So all we need to do is click on that and hopefully that will take us straight in and straight to our NPC that we need to speak to to update our journals quest, our single player story quest. And there we go, loaded in all quick already and there she is, Tataru! I think that's who we need to speak to. There's a bell there, a summoner's bell. Pretty sure that's the one we want. This is an instance all by itself, by the way, if we have a look on the map. Oh, no, don't want to move from this area. There we go, <laughs> silly me. Have we got a map here? Let's have a look. Yeah, but it's all white. So we've got a couple of exclamation marks there. Let's deal with this one first and see what she has to say. Duty calls. Do you wish to proceed with Fade to White? Well, I think we do. Now, let me just check before we do that because I want to see what my options are in terms of being able to actually switch out my character. But I think, pretty sure she's the one we need to talk to anyway. Let's have a bit of a run around here. No, nope, can't go in there. So I'm looking for other NPCs. I'm pretty sure that's the one, but we'll just be double sure. Don't think it was any of these ones. Pretty sure it's the one by the bell, if my memory serves me correctly. Go in here. No. All right, so that's definitely where we need to go, I think. So back we go to Tataru. I love the music in this game. Seriously. If you don't own the soundtrack to this, then I feel sorry for you. No, seriously, it's very good. All right, here we go. Let's have a chat. Would you like to proceed with Fade to White? Yes, we would. Welcome back, Pathbound Seraphis. Your companion should be arriving shortly. Well, where is she? Gosh, this guy seems a bit hoity-toity, a bit snooty, doesn't he? Allow me to introduce you to Seraphis Thrawen, an adventurer, a lately woken walker of the path and your new companion. Now, again, folks, if you have no idea what we're talking about with the walker of the path, the path of the chosen, all that stuff, just hop back a couple of episodes where you'll see my other single player episode that explains a whole bunch. A whole lot of the story is explained there. Let's carry on with the conversation. This one? Hmm. You shall have to do. Well, excuse me. Good Lord. Alright, so now we've got a quest 
with him. I'm wondering when I can actually change... Uh, so we're in a separate instance now. Not sure if I can change the person I chose yet or not. Does, not that it really matters, but I'd like to know how to do it. Let's have a chat with this guy. We don't even know his name. He's got question marks above his head. Oh, there we go. My name is my own. Call me what you will if you must call me anything at all. Oh, so we can name them ourselves. Oh, boy. All right. Well, I wasn't expecting that to happen. Oh, I'm going to have to think myself up a name here. Hmm. Let me think. Actually, if I cancel this, do you know what I'm going to have to do? I think we're going to have to have a bit of a sit down and have a think about this off camera. What shall I name him? We'll be right back, folks. And we're back, folks. Oh, boy, that was funny. All right, I went out to the Distant World Link Shell, as you can probably see here in the chat, and I said, help, guys, I need help naming my particular little companion here. And do you know what? Mini Ninja actually came up with a great one up here, and she said that she loves the name Aldo, A-L-D-O. And I must admit, looking at this guy, he kind of looks like a bit of an Aldo, if you ask me. But she also said it's the name of an NPC, you can see right there, an NPC in Final Fantasy XI. So I think Mini Ninja, it's your name that wins. And there we go. All right, I think what's next is that we have to go and see our pal Mimodi over at the Adventurers Guild. Let's have a look at the old map. And of course, we know where that is. That is over there where the Link Pearl is. You can see there's a little icon there. Let's run over and of course, we're going to get some jiggly hitching bits and pieces as all the characters load in. You can basically test this by standing still for a little bit, if you ever want to know. And you'll see that there's little white dots that see that. See, they all started to appear on the mini map and there you go. So you think you're running through an empty city, but no, there are people just absolutely everywhere. It's bonkers crazy. All right, without further ado, let's have a chat to Mimodi. Are you waiting for someone? A handsome suitor, perhaps? Oh, 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 then may I suggest our finest table? Which one is our finest, you ask? Why, all of them are. A star shower? Perhaps we have more in common than I first assumed. And of course, you guys know what we're talking about. That's the event from our last single player story episode. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go back and check. It's a couple of episodes back and you'll pick up the backstory there. I have spent many a night ruminating on this gift. What would the Twelve have me do with such power? I still do not know, but I mean to find out, alone if necessary, though you are welcome to join me. What say you? And here we go, do we begin our journey, yes or no? Of course, the answer is going to be yes. Very well. I will not have you presume that we are to spend every waking moment together. I am quite sure you have existing duties, and you may be certain that I do. However, as your companion on the path, I ask that if you come across anything of importance, you contact me. You may use the link pearl given to you by Lady Tataru. And with that, I bid you farewell, Seraphis. Look at this fade to white completed. 45,000 gil is all of ours. 1150 XP. Excellent stuff. Now I'm pretty sure that we don't have to speak to Mamodi about that anymore. No, we don't. And if we ever look in our journal, pretty sure that that will be gone now. And it is, it's gone. All right, so let's have a look at the Link Pearl and see if we can find that. Um, what do we got here? That's the NPC Link Pearl, I think. So there's nothing down there. Now, whereabouts in our inventory would we find this? NPC Link Pearls, that's where. Path of the Twelve, if we click on that, let's see what comes up. Nothing. 
no and nothing for the adventurers guild so i'm guessing that if anything does pop up that that will start flashing and it will know when we need to speak with our companion unless there's some way of summoning your companion if you want to maybe let's go over to the bell we know this is the retainer bell but maybe it's also for summoning companions don't know and no that's just the retainer there what i think we might do is go out and ask our link shell if there's any way of summoning our companion manually and we'll find out what they say and we'll be right back and we're back and it seems to me you can see that in the chat that Catella, hello Catella, is saying that it's only available at certain times for us so that'll be interesting to see when it pops up now those of you amongst us who are watching with a sharp eye will possibly notice again that we've got this on our back that's because i'm currently a conjurer so i've been trying to level up my conjuring and i did a little bit of that throughout the week and that's why i've got these particular clothes on and of course as you know i've got my actual if we go to gear got my actual conjurer stick if you like this here which is there it is that's why i've got my weathered cane because that is for a conjurer now as you guys know if you need to change class all you need to do is change your main hand weapon so i thought i'd do some leveling of this and i've got it up to level seven and you can see we've got ourselves some pretty cool little spells there by the way already as i've been leveling up specifically i've got here stone and cure both of which i use already on my marauder but we've also got aero this one here deals wind damage and has a chance to inflict a bleed effect and this one here which is protect and this lasts for about two or three minutes i think and it increases the defense of all party members within range of the target we can actually cast that right now on ourselves i believe there we go there it is protect you gain the effect of protect now what i thought we'd do just to wrap up this episode because of course it's been mainly concentrating on the storyline stuff is let's go do ourselves a little low level leave quest and i say low level because once again even though our marauder is up in the 23 24 mark when we're on our conjurer here it is only level seven so what i want to do is find a nice low level lower than level 10 there we go one to ten is what we want camp black brush let's find ourselves some battle craft leave quests and there we go sprightly spriggans we'll grab that one let's just grab them all and then what we're going to do of course is head on over there and we shall pick one up at the etherite crystal and go do some combat as a conjurer because i don't believe you guys have seen us with any other class than the marauders so there you go. oh look at that that was nikos let's have a bit of a wave hello maybe i can't actually wave while we're in this particular dialogue never mind all right let's get the cogwheel scramble up and something in the water we'll grab that as well and we'll grab weevil panic i'm sure one of these will be fine there we go let's cancel out of there leave there now where did nikos go where is he can we find him or has he disappeared let's just wave anyway just in case just in case he can still see us <laughs> And like I said, of course, super busy here in Eorzea, and we love it because we're always running into friends and Link Shell members wherever we go. Okay, so all of those were, let's have a look in our journal, pretty sure that all of those were actually in the camp, where are we? Camp Black Brush, that's right. Okay, so that's where we need to go. Let's have a look at our leave history. Yep, okay, that's cool. Let's go to Teleport, and let's choose Thanalan. You know how this works, folks. Camp Black Brush, nice and easy. I've got 100 anima. And all I'm going to do is use up four of them. And we'll head on out there and see if we can get ourselves at least to level eight. That would be nice. I'm going to try and actually level this one up because then it means, of course, that I've got some good heals going on, which would be a nice little compliment to our Marauder class. So, of course, the easiest way to level up these lower levels is by doing leave quests at first. Or if you want to, you can actually run with your Link Shell as well. All right, let's go talk to the Etherite Crystal. And yes, we want to initiate a leave quest. We'll just grab the first one there, Sprightly Spriggans. And you can see the objective is to eliminate the following targets. Spriggan times six. Now I'm just gonna go easy on myself here and choose one star because we don't know what this is gonna be like. There we go, picked it up. And hopefully in a second that will come up in the top left knowing therefore that we're on it and there you go you can see it's been activated sprightly spriggans we're oh they're right outside the camp i can see them on my mini map right out here and if we have a look on the main map you'll be able to see them yeah there we are there's the yellow area you know how it works folks all right so we're going to go straight up here i'm going to hit f to present my arms and get ourselves into combat mode and going to hit enter there we go and off we go now of course we're all casting this is all about the casting now 
so we're not going to run up and do melee stuff. So I'm going to hit one and then enter. Come on. Oh, target is too far below us. All right, fine. We'll get closer. And look at that. One shot at it. All right, I think somehow we are going to be able to actually choose something a little bit easier. I don't know. What do you think? Give ourselves a heal. Let's try this arrow one now. And we'll go for that Spriggan over there. And we one-shotted that one as well. Good lord. All right, this is just a little bit easy, isn't it? I think we definitely need to up the difficulty just a tad. <laughs> Let's put our little shield up though first as well. Make sure we got that going. Not that we really need it, but it's a good habit to get into. Protect is the one we want. All right, arrow. Off we go. Wow, okay, this, yeah, just a bit silly, isn't it? We are just a little bit too high for this, I think. All right, four out of six. And where are the other two? They are over this way. And again, all I'm doing is following the red blips on the minimap and, of course, the big yellow area as well, which indicates the general area that the entire quest is in. Now, where are these? Oh, they're way down there. All right, so I have to go round, I think. There we are, and look at that, we are actually nearly level 8 as well. This is working very well. Now, I wonder if I'm going to be able to cast from down here. Not sure, but we'll soon find out. Let's throw stone at them. No, too far above us. Oh, we could just, apparently just climb right up there. There you go. And look at that, the beautiful city of Uldar in the background there, by the way, making for a fantastic background. There we go, level 8 we are. Yay us, woohoo! All right, we'll give ourselves some congratulations in just a second. And there it is, the leave quest is over. And there it is, the Final Fantasy victory theme, which we love so very much. Let's give ourselves a nice big round of applause there for leveling to level 8. Yay us. And of course, if we want to, we can go in and check out our actions and traits. And this way we'll be able to see what level we get our next ability. And you can see here, Cleric Stance, which is level 10 actually. And that increases the potency of attack spells by 20% and reduces the potency of healing spells by 20%. And the effect ends upon reuse. That's a very interesting stance to have there. Bit of a sacrifice to gain the benefit there of the attack spell. So, mm, interesting. All right, so in the meantime, though, you can tell here we've got Stone, we've got Cure, we've got Arrow, and we've got Protect. All right, so what I want to do is interact with the Etherite node here, as always. And we want to complete that. And we'll return to Camp Black Brush. I think we've got time for at least one more leave quest. This is lots of fun. Because we never get to play as a Conjurer normally. So let's do this, and let's this time up the difficulty just one star. So we go up to two stars. Could be interesting. It could be our death. That's okay. This one we need to obtain the following items. Cogwheel ore times 24. All right, so we're going to go two stars on this one. Oh, boy. I always get nervous when we do this. Never mind. There we go. That is it. We've accepted it. Just waiting for it to be activated now so we know whereabouts in the world we have to go. And there it is. It is activated and it's over this way. Let's start running there. And if we have a look at the map, it's... Oh, look at that. It's just over the other side of the road. So it's not too far away as we head up north. But look at this site, guys. Seriously, what a beautiful looking game. Oh, man. Again, if you're not playing this, you are missing out. Come along. Come and join us here in Eorzea. It's only $9.95 a month, by the way. It's not your standard $14.95 like most MMOs are. So, yeah, nice and easy on the wallet, I guess. All right, so we've got 30 minutes to get these 24 cogwheel ores, and we're looking for the ones with the, yeah, the little quest icon beside them there. That is particularly what we're after in this case. All righty. Let's start off with some stone. Now, one thing I do have to watch, of course, is my energy levels. That's the big thing when you're a caster. So I'm going to do a couple of auto attacks. These are crazy looking monsters, aren't they? Bonkers. Oh, there we go. 
and we got four out of 24 of the cogwheel ore. So we're not doing too bad. Let's do aero. And we one shot at that one. Nine is how many we've got now. All right, not enough to one shot on that time with the stone. This time we're going to go for aero. And there we go. We've now got 13 out of 24 of the copper chunks. Ouch! All right, that hurt. Now let's not forget, folks, that we can heal ourselves because we are playing as a conjurer. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Let's give ourselves a heal via the cure ability. There it is. All right, 21 out of 24. We're just looking for the last couple. There we go. Let's throw the old arrow out. And I'm going to rebuff myself with protect, by the way. I really need to do that. Oh, and we are done. How's that? Woohoo! Give ourselves a heal. Go out of active mode and into passive mode. Oh, I love the graphics in this game. I love everything about it. I love the sounds, love the music, love the animations, love the environment. It is just all round an amazing game. And a bit of lag there, never mind. All right, so let's interact with this etherite node here. And you can see here we get ourselves 184 gil. We get a whole bunch of completion bonus rewards there in the way of gil. That's always good. And we get a whole bunch of faction credits as well. Oh, I love it. It's always a shame for an episode to come to an end here. Let's return to Camp Blackbrush. It always goes so fast when we play Final Fantasy XIV. You know what? I hope you guys are playing. And if you are, once the server here unlocks, once Masamune unlocks, certainly hope you guys will come and join us here on the Distant World Link Shell on our little server of Masamune because, boy, do we have a heck of a time. All right, so that was lots of fun. I think what we can do in the future, by the way, we're now level 8.5 on our Conjurer. I reckon that we can try some three-star ones. So I'm going to log out right here. We'll end the episode here, and we'll see if we can next time pick up up a three star leave and see how we go but I think at this rate we're going to have no time at all before we get to level 10 and unlock our new conjurer ability it's going to be lots and lots of fun in the meantime folks certainly hope you enjoyed that episode certainly hope you're going to join us in the next one on behalf of myself Sambo and of course the wonderful Seraphis Thrawn here our now level 8 conjurer it's us saying take care certainly hope you're having a great day wherever in the world you are we do look forward to seeing you next time we will see you then and bye bye